Aloha kakahiaka kako. Welcome to our Committee on Water Land hearing. Today is April 11th, 2024, 9 a.m. agenda in conference room 430 at the state capitol. Today we are hearing Senate resolutions. Um, uh, just a reminder to our testifiers on Zoom, if you can please leave your cameras and microphones muted until it's your time to testify, and please do not use a trademarked or copyrighted image as a background. Okay, we will get started with SCR3, SD1, urging the United States Geological Survey to conduct topographical surveys, particularly within lava flow hazard zones one and two to update its long-term lava flow hazard map of Hawaii Island. Um, we received a testimony in support. There's no one signed up to testify. Is there anyone wishing to provide testimony? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to SCR6, SD1. Hello. Oh. Hey. Hello. Are you here to testify for SCR3? No. Okay. SCR6. Okay. Um, SCR6, approving the dedication of Kukuya Street, Lahaina, Hawaii to the county of Maui. Um, yeah. DLNR. Go ahead. Okay. Morning, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Luke Sarvis for Gilanar. We'll send in our written testimony and support and be available for questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, DLNR was the only testifier signed up. Is there anyone else wishing to provide testimony? Okay, hearing none. Members, any questions? Okay, hearing no questions, we'll move on to SCR 46, SD1 requesting the Department of Accounting and General Services to establish a working group to plan and construct a Hawaii First Responders Memorial. Um, there's no one signed up to provide testimony. We did receive testimony and support. Um, is there anyone wishing to provide testimony? Okay, hearing none, we will move on to SCR 67, urging the legislature to preserve, protect, and restore Limukala. Um, SCR 67, DLNR. Okay, um, kua aina ulu awamo. Aloha mai kako, Malia Hemuli, Lim Hui coordinator with kua aina ulu awamo. Um, we stand by our testimony that we submitted and mahalo for always supporting Limu. Thank you. Okay, that's all we have signed up to testify. Members, any questions? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to SCR 70. Requesting the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency to install a new emergency siren near the intersection of Almakua Street and Auhuhu Street in Upper Pacific Palisades. M S C R. Um, okay, we have Larry Vare, Chairman Pearl City Neighborhood Board. Okay, uh, not present. We will move on to SCR 99, requesting the United States Department of Transportation to conduct an investigation regarding the safety of the bridges along Hana Highway. Um, we have no one signed up to provide testimony, but we did receive testimony and support. Um, is there anyone here wishing to provide testimony? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to SCR 104. Oh, okay. Come on up. <laughs> oh, you mean okay, we're catch still my breath. on. I got COPD. Oh, well, good morning okay. and aloha, everybody. Larry Bray. I'm chair for the Pearl City <laughs> Neighborhood Board, and I'm representing our board as a whole because we established a requirement uh, 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 a few months ago in regard to uh, the need for a siren in Pacific Palisades. And of course, with the 6,000 residents that are up there, the closest siren that they could possibly hear is ac actually at Pearl City High School, which is over the ridge. So this, this siren's been down for over two years. That's unsatisfactory. We need to get it in as soon as possible. And the other thing that we're asking from the Pearl City Neighbor Board is we need to uh, recommend also that all our sirens be brought up to the latest technology of sirens. Uh, the Navy has already done it, Pearl Harbor. When there's an active shooter, they can actually come up verbally over their PA system that they have. It's very loud. And they can actually say active shooter and those kind of things. Uh, imagine you could it opens up the door because 
for multi-language issues with some of our seniors and things like that. But that siren is important because a lot of our seniors may not be listening to radio, may not be using their TV. So I strongly recommend that you please uh, continue to pass this, uh, resolu uh, bo this uh, uh, resolution in, in support of that. Any questions? Any questions, members? Okay, that's okay, the last, no last of my oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay, where were we? Um, okay, we finished SCR 99, and we are on SCR 104, urging the state, city, and county of Honolulu and United States military to coordinate and address the issue of illegal dumping within Waipahu and the surrounding communities of Eva, Pearl City, and Aiea on Oahu. SCR 104. Department of Health on Zoom. Uh, good morning, Terry Chiyama, Vice Chair Poi Poi, and committee members. Uh, Glenn Hai with the Department of Health, Solid and Hazardous Waste Branch. The department stands on its written testimony, providing comments, and are available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's all signed up to testify. Is there anyone else wishing to provide testimony? Okay, seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, no questions. SCR 122, SD1. Requesting the Department of Land and Natural Resources to work with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and other experts to conduct a study on the population status of depleted coral reef herbivores around the island of Oahu and develop effective alternative policies for substantially replenishing those populations within a decade. Um, DLNR, on Zoom. Okay, we have... Okay, that's all we have signed up to provide testimony. Is there anyone else wishing to testify? Okay, seeing none, um, SCR 122, we'll move on to SCR 123. SCR 123, SD1, requesting the Department of Land and Natural Resources to convene a working group to make recommendations on solutions to reduce wildfire risk and the feasibility of establishing a vegetation management program as it relates to landowners and pub public utilities. Okay, let's see who we got. Um, DCCA. Vice Chair, Chair, members of the committee, Mickey Knox for the Division of Consumer Advocacy. We'll stand on our written comments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. DLNR on Zoom. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm Michael Walker, Statewide Bioprotection Forester for Division of Forestry and Wildlife. We stand on our written testimony, providing comments, and are available for any questions. Thank you. Um, Hawaiian Electric. Good morning, Chair and Vice Chair and members of the committee. My name is Wendy Oda, and I am here on behalf of Hawaiian Electric. We have submitted written testimony, but I'd like to add to my testimony. Hawaiian Electric understands the community's concerns about wildfire risk and believes the formation of the Vegetation Management Group is a first step in defining property owner obligations to perform vegetation management on both public and private property to address wildfire mitigation risk. Hawaiian Electric understands and is sensitive to the major challenges when it comes to vegetation management and the landowner compliance, but looks forward to participating in the Vegetation Management Working Group. One Electric believes the Vegetation Management Working Group will consider wildfire mitigation measures, such as regulations related to vegetation management obligations of the landowner, as well as practical vegetation management programs for landowners and public utilities. Thank you for the opportunity to add my testimony, and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Hawaiian Telecom. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. I'm not gonna go over my written statement, but I just wanted to add that um, the reason why, we, we prefer the um, SD1 version of this bill, of this resolution, which um, did not include a representative from the telecommunications industry working group. For the reasons being, um, which I, uh, I've outlined in testimony, but in addition to that, um, Hawaiian Telecom and other telecommunication service providers that attach to poles, utility poles owned by electric utilities, are all tenants on the pole, and we do not feel we do not feel like uh, as a, a tenant of the pole, we do not have the same we we. Re, 
we are um, expecting that the health and the, that the safety of the poll be um, maintained. And there are a number of other reasons um, which I can go into, but um, because we are a tenant on the polls, I, you know, with, with every um, landlord, you expect that there is a duty of care um, to maintain the polls. And uh, we, while we have, um, we have limited responsibility to maintaining vegetation as tenants on these polls. And um, just wanted to also share, there is a symposium that we are also participating in. So, you know, in addition to this vegetation management working group, there are other activities that are already going on, um, which HECO is sponsoring and we are participating in, but, but it doesn't bind us to maintain, having a vegetation management system which we, we do not have for a lot of um, practical reasons as, as we are not, um, we are just tenants on these polls. So um, open for any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wishing to provide testimony? Okay, members, any questions? Questions? Well, Hawaiian Tail. I didn't realize that you were only tenants on the polls, so say for instance, Kauai, those polls that you are used for cable, um, whatever, who owns them? With the exception of Kauai, um, oh. we, we, for the rest of the state, we um, sold our joint ownership of the, the uh, electric utility polls to HECO in 2018. So with Kauai, there is, um, that you know, we, we do jointly own some of those polls, and we do individually own some um, just telecommunications polls, which are much shorter. Yeah. But we mm. do not own the electricity. We do not jointly own the um, the the ninety five percent of the electricity polls. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That that's what um, I'm worried about because those are the polls on Kauai that are over, just covered with vegetation. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Um, just oh, I have a question too. Sure. Um, just kind of on what Rep. Morikawa said. So, Hawaiian Telecom used to own a share of the electric utility poles. We, with the, we or? yeah. So up until 20, 2018, we jointly owned and managed the utility poles with Hawaiian Electric. Um, the, the majority of it. And as of 2018, we sold our share to Hawaiian Electric. Okay. Um, we, we do have a system which we are working with them um, in, in terms of um, addressing some of the attachments on the poles, which, because there's a, a number of double poles that remained. And so we're working through the backlog of removing that, and that's something that we do, we do share currently. Okay. So Hawaiian Telecom does still own some poles. We own, we The own, shorter ones, some of the shorter yes. ones, or the ones that are still doubled and haven't been removed yet. Well, no, just the shorter ones. Okay. So the, the, um, those, the poles that we do own don't carry electric, um, electric lines, mm -hmm. so they have a different, um, they, they have different specifications, which they're shorter, they're not, they're not built to carry those electric lines, unless that's something that the electric company wants to, an electric utility wants to um, build and, you know, and, and um, uh, maintain. So previous to 2018, Hawaiian Telecom did have additional responsibilities for things like vegetation management because you were a partial owner. And then after the transfer of the poles, um, all of that responsibility went to Hawaiian Electric? We have very, we've had minimal um, limited vegetation management responsibilities primarily because our lines do not carry electric current. So if vegetation um, grows up around the lines, our lines are still operable, which is very different 
from the electric utility where there becomes a hazard if trees or shrubbery grows around those lines. So those, those need to be maintained. So if you, and then this is the, the standard of practice in other states. And so if you look around other jurisdictions, there is a, um, you know, the, it's, it's, it's a very different system of um, maintenance. And we do, do trim back areas of, of our, our poles when we, when we need to. But in most cases, um, the management of vegetation does fall on a landowner or right-of-way owner, especially if it's growing from their, um, their homes, their property. So, so I don't know if this is for you or Hawaiian Electric, but so even along the highway when it's on probably state or county property, then does that fall on the state or county to do the vegetation management? That sounds like right of way mm -hmm. ownership, and it, it depends. I think it really depends um, if it where it's coming from. And a lot of the um, inquiries that we deal with are on a case by case basis. So we we work together to figure out where that um, area of responsibility is. Much of it does fall on the landowner or right of way owner, and. Um, they are the first, you know, the first step is to contact them to, to remediate the vegetation. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you for helping um, me understand. Quick question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. I don't know if you've ever heard the saying that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> so it sounds like Hawaiian Telecom does not want to be at the table. Are you worried about being on the menu? <laughs> um, I would, you know, I, I don't know if I would characterize it like that, but what we are, um, what, what we are concerned about is this presumption of, li of liability. And well, I can understand that for the bills, but yeah. this is a working group. Yes. To just bring everybody together, have a discussion. It sounds like you folks don't feel like you need to be part of that discussion. As current, in our current capacity as tenants on many of these polls, we don't feel like we, we are at many of the discussions to begin with, but for this, this particular working group, we, do, we, do, we prefer not to be in the working group. And I, I think we're not the only telecommunication service provider that has that same feeling, if I may state that. Well, the way I read the resolution, it's that the telecommunications provider should be invited to attend, but not required. So I think if you so chose, you could not show up. I, un I, I understand what, you know, what the sentiment um, is, but I, I also feel that there is a, um, a slippery slope that there may be, there may be new precedent created to require tenants to perform vegetation management, which is not um, in sync with our, you know, w with what the standard practices are. I see. So it's not specifically necessarily participating in discussions that you're concerned about, because that's what you're doing already from what I'm hearing you say. Yeah. It's about uh, future liability. Is that what I'm hearing? That's what we are hearing. So there's a, like I mentioned, there's a symposium that is going on, which I know Hawaiian Electric has helped organize. We, we and other landowners are participating in that symposium. And the message from that symposium is that everyone has a shared responsibility, which we appreciate. We, you know, and we are doing um, different mitigation efforts to um, underground our facilities in areas where, um, there, where, where it's prone to wildfire, we have started those um, actions. So we, we feel we are moving ahead and we are independently um, making some strides to start to affect change where, you know, where we see there is opportunity to. And we, we um, you know, look forward to doing more of that. We received a federal grant recently 
to um, build new middle mile facilities, which have an eye to um, harden our network um, to sustain the effects of climate change over time. So we're building more diverse routes throughout the state to mitigate these um, effects. And so, you know, we are doing our own things. It's, it's not that we're um, trying to, uh, to you know, shirk any responsibility. We do have, we do feel we have a responsibility. We do not have, ha we do not have the same duty of care though um, that the electric utility, we feel the electric utility has. And if we, as we look around to what the practices are in other states, um, we do see that there are many efforts to step forward and look at different um, uh, opportunities to mitigate wildfires or other hazards going forward. And, you know, we are doing that independently. Landowners, I'm hearing from the symposium, have taken uh, proactive steps. I personally have a neighbor who lives against a mountainside and she and the other neighbors have also taken proactive steps to pull together and, and make sure that that brush behind their homes is um, cleared as far away from their homes as possible. So there are many different um, activities that we all can do to, to mitigate wildfires, but um, to be, to be Un, you know, to, to be able to express to you about our, our reservations today, um, you know, is, I think it, it should, um, I, 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 I think it, it I mean, it, it, it's, it, it, it makes you aware of what we're, you know, what we are feeling. And um, we, we understand that the task force is um, voluntary. But I can, you know, I, I don't see that there's anyone around us that is, seems to be willing to step forward to, you know, to participate. And I am one of those here today that is respectfully um, requesting that we be removed as a named party to this task force. Understood. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a follow-up question. Um, so... Just based on some of the earlier questions too, it does seem like Hawaiian Tel has a very recent history of being more of a participant in the management of the poles and the vegetation. And I think that that history could, you know, be a very helpful resource and also an understanding, like better bringing to the table the, the relationship between Hawaiian Tel and Hawaiian Electric. Um, I think that that could be a really valuable resource to this committee. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around, you know, whether or it not. So do you, do you not feel that, because like we still call electric poles telephone poles. That's how recent the history of ownership is. Um, so do you not feel like there is any value that having telecommunications could bring to the, the working group? Well, I can tell you that the history of te the telecommunications company has changed quite dramatically, especially in the last 10 to 15 years. Um, the number of telecommunications service provider services that we provide has has um, decreased exponentially. Um, and the, so the product today is much different and it, 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 it has a much lighter and more energy efficient um, but medium. I was just speaking is, to like the, the recent history of Hawaiian Telecom having had some greater responsibility as recent as 2018 um, and previous to 2018, decades of history in helping, having a more active role in managing vegetation and the maintenance of the poles. So I, I'm just thinking that that history 
And, you know, that knowledge could be useful in informing the working group. Um, so I'm just asking, I guess, if you don't think that, that that would, you know, that that brings, that that brings much value to the working group. I think that there are ways that we can still advise um, if we, you know, but, but not be formally part of the working group, if that's what you're trying to, 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 to ask. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, members, any more questions? Okay, we will move on to SCR 131 SD1, urging Hawaii's congressional delegation to take all actions necessary and proper to cause the United States Congress to fund the construction and commencement of operations of a laboratory certified by the United States Environmental Protection Agency to analyze environmental toxins in the state and publish the results to the public. And we will start with, um, we have Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party on Zoom. Hey, good morning, Chair. Good morning, Vice Chair and members of the committee. My name is Melody Duha. I am the co-chair of the Environmental Caucus of the Democratic Party. We feel very strongly about this resolution and we do request that this committee pass this resolution. Uh, it's been several sessions now in which uh, funding for an, an EPA certified lab has gone through the ledge. However, uh, it seems that the funding is not forthcoming and so we would like to request that that funding be made through the federal government, through our Hawaii delegation. Uh, it's very important that we have a certified lab for many reasons. I would say that the most important one would be uh, timing, because as uh, Chair and Vice Chair, you might know, uh, anytime that there's a rapid test, perhaps that is done locally, uh, then a sample would have to be taken or transported to California as the nearest certified lab is located. And then a confirmation test would be done there. And then we and those in Hawaii would have to wait until the return of that sample test uh, before any type of public notice is given. Uh, I have in my testimony an example, which includes um, DOH testing of Kumia well number three, in which a random test was made in September of 2022. Uh, and then uh, it was sent to uh, California for an EPA certified test. And it came back in October. And then on November, a second sample to confirm that initial sample was made and again sent to California. And it wasn't until I would say December, perhaps that's when that sample came back, in anywhere between two to six weeks turnaround time. But it wasn't until January that um, it became public through the news that uh, Kumia well number three and subsequently number four had detections of PFAS. So you've got the residents of Kumia village uh, consuming that water for about four months uh, without having any prior notice that uh, what they are consuming is highly carcinogenic, highly toxic. So we believe that a certified EPA lab is very necessary and should be required, uh, especially now with the new regulations, national regulations that have been put forth by the uh, <coughs> EPA. Uh, you know, we know through the website of the department, I'm sorry, of the Board of Water Supply, that there has been detections of PFAS in our municipal system. And uh, we would need to have a certified lab that can detect in such very, very low levels. Uh, take, for example, PFOS. The um, new regulations calls for 0 0.004 parts per trillion, uh, which under the current DOH standard is 12 parts per trillion. So it's uh, about a 3,000 time difference, which now the DOH is going to have to uh, match that that the EPA standard has set forth. There's going to be a lot of systems that are going to have to change in order to meet this much 
more stricter um, uh, level of what would be considered safe drinking water. In that case, we do need to have a certified lab on island. Uh, plus, having an independent lab would also help because a lot of these tests that are conducted are conducted by those that are responsible for the contamination in the first place. So take, for example, the tests that are done regarding the waters that have been contaminated as a result of Red Hill. In that case, it is the Navy that is doing the testing. And we just found out recently that of the 8,000 samples that they have tested, they are considering a lab error. So if we had our own EPA certified lab on island, then we can also uh, contrast, dispute, match whatever results that uh, a third party comes up with. Uh, I am available for any questions and um, please pass this measure. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all we have signed up to testify. Is there anyone else wishing to provide testimony? Okay, members, any questions? Oh, yes. Okay, go ahead, Department of Health. Yes. Uh, so, yes, I'm, I'm Ed Desmond representing um, the Department of Health, Environmental Health, and I'm also the administrator of the uh, EPA certified uh, laboratory at the State Department of Health. We've submitted written testimony, and uh, we stand on our written testimony. And we are prepared to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, um, anyone else wishing to testify? Okay, members, any questions? Okay, I have a question, um, I guess for maybe for Environmental Caucus, for Melody. Um, yes. So the Department of Health's testimony says that they do not lack a testing lab laboratory certified by EPA that is capable of detecting toxins present in drinking water and air. Um, so is it that they lack like adequate testing facilities? Yes. Okay. I would say that. I, I believe the, on my testimony, I've indicated a figure of $100 million to fund a certified lab I believe that figure came from prior testimony by the Department of Health. Okay, um, Department of Health? Um, we are uh, developing the capacity to test for PFAS as an example. Um, there was uh, a new standard uh, issued by EPA, this was two days ago, which includes uh, for PFAS, PFOS, for uh, parts per trillion. This is a new standard. And so we have the instrumentation on order and, and we're developing and expanding our capacity to test uh, for PFAS. Okay. Um, uh, Department of Health, can you grab federal funding for some of that? Oh, indeed. Yeah, we have some federal funding for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, well, you know, we, <laughs> we have no objection to more federal funding. Uh, expanded federal funding to increase our capacity. We have no objection to that at all. But I, I did, did want to clarify that we do have an EPA certified laboratory. And uh, now that there's uh, an EPA um, certified maximum contaminant level for, for PFAS, PFAS um, um, that we're ready to um, you know implement and, and test and compare to those standards because those can be, in the future will be action standards. Thank you. Um, for Department of Health, so the, the, I think one of the concerns and testimony was also like the time it takes um, to get results back for some of the tests that are sent away. So are, what you're currently working on would reduce that or provide more expeditious results because you're doing them in-house for PFAS? Correct. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Members, any more questions? Okay, seeing none, moving on to SCR 181, requesting the establishment of a statewide firefighting aircraft program. Um, DLNR on Zoom. Okay, okay, um, not present, so that's all signed up. Anyone else wishing to provide testimony? 
Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to <coughs> SCR 182. <coughs> Urging the Public Utilities Commission to honor and comply with its statutory duty to investigate the causes of the August 2023 Maui wildfires as required by Section 269-9 Hawaii Revised Statutes. Um, DCCA. Okay. That's all that was signed up to testify. Um, not present. So is there anyone else wishing to provide testimony? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to SCR 186. Requesting the insurance commissioner to conduct a comprehensive study on wildfire risk and insurance, including market-based approaches. Mm -hmm. Ian Robertson for the DCCA Insurance yep. Division. Uh, we send in a written testimony offering comments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, that's all signed up. Anyone else wishing to provide testimony? Okay, seeing none. Members, any questions? No questions. We will move on to SCR 203, requesting the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development in County of Maui to inventory and map existing R1 water delivery systems and reservoirs in Maui County. Um, DLNR on... Okay, um, OPSD on Zoom. Good morning, Chair Ichiyama, Vice Chair Poi Poi, and members of the House Committee on Water and Land. My name is Arthur Butch. I'm with the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Well, we stand on our testimony offering comments on SCR 203 SD1, and I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's all we have signed up. Is there anyone else wishing to provide testimony? Okay, seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, no questions. We'll move on to SCR 215, SD1, requesting the Department of Land and Natural Resources to collaborate with federal, state, and county governments, landowners, and stakeholders to protect, restore, and manage the West Maui wetlands and wetlands statewide. SCR 215, DLNR. I'm Afshin Siddiqui with um, DLNR. Um, Aloha, can you hear me? <laughs> um, Afshin Siddiqui with DLNR. Um, we stand on our testimony in support of this measure. Thank you. Okay, that's all we have signed up. Anyone else wishing to testify? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to SCR 219, SD1, urging the Federal Emergency Management Agency to expedite the placement of <laughs> Maui wildfire survivors into federal into the federal direct lease program. Um, okay, we have Brian and Carrie <coughs> Aspo. Oh, that, sorry, that's the next one, wrong one. Okay, we have no one signed up to testify. Is there anyone wishing to provide testimony? Okay, seeing none. Um, now we will move on to the next one. HR 77 with a proposed HD1, um, HR 77, the proposed HD1 um, strongly urging the city and county of Honolulu to reconsider using the YPO soccer complex as its next landfill site. Okay, um, this one we have Brian and Carrie Aspo in person. Okay, that's all we have signed up to testify. Is there anyone else wishing to provide testimony? Oh, DLNR. Uh, good morning, Sheriff Vice Chair Luke Sarvis. This is actually in my personal capacity. I just happened to be here. I did submit written testimony. I uh, just oh. want to say as a member of the Men's Zone League, over 35 league that plays out there regularly, I strongly support the proposed draft. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, anyone else wishing to provide testimony? Okay. Seeing none, members, questions? Okay, no questions. We will recess for decision making.
we are back for decision making. Um, starting with SCR 3, SD 1, recommendation is to pass as is. Are there any um, comments or questions, concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Members voting on SCR 3, SD 1, recommendation is to pass as is. Chair, Vice Chair, vote aye. Rep Chun? Aye. Rep Ganyadan? Aye. Rep Hasham? Aye. Rep Mizuno? Aye. Rep Moikawa? Aye. Rep Takayama? Aye. Rep Souza is excused. Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 6, SD1, <clears throat> recommendation is to pass as is. Any questions, comments? Okay, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 6, SD1, recommendation is to pass as is. Noting Rep Souza excused. Any reservations or no's? Recommendation is adopted. <clears throat> Thank you, members. SCR 46, <clears throat> recommendation is to pass a House Draft 1. Um, we are going to add a whereas clause from HCR 97, House Draft 2, on page 2, lines 1 through 5. And this um, whereas clause just makes mention that there is a law enforcement memorial and foundation that was formed in 2010. And um, just kind of similar to what we're trying to do here for first responders. Okay, any questions, comments, concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 46, Senate Draft 1, recommendation is to pass with amendments. Noting Rep. Sousa excused. Any reservations or no's? Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 67, um, recommendation is a House Draft 1. We are going to adopt the amendments from the KUA testimony. Um, and then we are going to remove sending certified copies to the President of the Senate or the Speaker of the House, as that is not needed. Okay, any questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 67, recommendation is to pass with amendments. Noting Rep. Sue is excused. Any reservations or no's, recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 70, SD1, um, recommendation is to pass as is. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 70, Senate Draft 1, recommendation to pass as is. Noting Rep. Sue is excused. Any reservations or no's? Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 99, recommendation is to pass as is. Um, any questions or comments, concerns? Okay, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 99, recommendation is to pass as is. Re noting Rep. Sue is excused. Any reservations or no's? Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 104, SD1. Um, recommendation is HD1 to make technical non-substantive amendments. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 104, Senate Draft 1, recommendation is to pass with amendments. Noting Rep. Sousa excused. Any reservations or no's? Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 122, SD1, recommendation is an HD1, um, and we are going to replace the contents with the contents from HCR 83, which is the House version of this resolution. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Members voting on SCR 122, Senate Draft 1, recommendations to pass with amendments, noting Rep. Sousa excused, any reservations or no's, recommendation is adopted. Thank you. SCR 123, SD1. Recommendation is to pass an HD1 for technical amendments for clarity, consistency, and style. And um, yep, that's the recommendation. Members, any questions, comments, concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 123, Senate Draft 1, recommendation to pass with amendments, noting Rep. Sousa excused, any reservations or no's. Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 131, SD1. Um, Recommendation is to pass the House Draft 1, changing the title to match HCR 208, which is the House version, and then um, also a couple other changes just based on the testimony. Um, on page 1, line 6, um, we're going to add that the state continues to lack adequate testing laboratory facilities, um, adding the word adequate and facilities. On line eight, we're going to remove the words that is, and after the word of, um, add the word expeditiously. And then on page seven, um, page two, line seven, 
After the word labor laboratory, we're going to remove would need to and then write should. And on page 12, after it'll read, whereas the present lack of adequate testing laboratory facilities. So adding adequate testing facilities and removing the letter A. And that's, that's the recommendation. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 131, Senate Draft 1, recommendation is to pass with amendments. Uh, noting Rep. Souza excused, are there any reservations or no's? Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 181, SD1, as is. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 181, Senate Draft 1, recommendation is to pass as is. Noting Rep. Souza excused, any reservations or no's? Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 182, SD1, as is. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 182, Senate Draft 1, recommendation is to pass as is. Uh, noting Rep. Souza excused, any reservations or no's? Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 186, um, recommendation is to pass as is. And in the committee report, we're going to note DCCA's comments regarding um, the funding and time needed and then we're going to put that for the next committee to consider. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 186, recommendation is to pass as is. No any reps, Susan, excuse any reservations or no's. Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 203, SD 1, um, recommendation is a house draft one. We're going to clarify the be it resolved um, so that, just to clarify that this is requested for Maui County. And then we are going to add DLNR into the body and the title as an agency that is requested to participate. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 203, Senate Draft 1, recommendation to pass with amendments, noting Rep. Sousa excuse, any reservations or no's, recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 215, SD1, as is. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 215, Senate Draft 1, recommendation to pass as is. Noting Rep. Sousa excuse, any reservations or no's, recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SCR 219, SD1, as is. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, chair for the vote. Voting on SCR 219, Senate Draft 1, recommendation to pass as is. Noting Rep. Sousa excuse, any reservations or no's, recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. HR 77, recommendation is to adopt the proposed HD1. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Oh, Rep. Chen. Uh, thank you, Chair and Vice Chair, for um, considering this proposed HD1. You know, there was testimony in opposition on the process, so I just wanted to highlight three points just to address any concerns with the process. First of all, this is a resolution and not a bill. Um, the second point I wanted to make is that uh, Really, this issue became public after Mayor Blangiardi's uh, State of the City address on March 14th. Unfortunately, the resolution deadline was March 8th, so there was no time to actually do a resolution on this issue. And third, uh, the primary introducer and myself um, thought long and hard about trying to do something, and because the underlying premise of the resolution was illegal dumping in Waipahu, with regards to germaneness, this is just changing it to legal dumping in Waipahu as a very basic premise. So with those considerations in mind, I appreciate the committee's support. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any more discussion? No dumping in Waipahu. Okay, hearing none, chair for the vote. Uh, voting on HR 77, recommendation is to pass with amendments, noting Rep. Sousa excuse. Any reservations or no's, recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members, and we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>